welcome you again in the classes of vvs academy we were doing the energy and environment chapter which is unit 5 in your syllabus and almost half of the unit we have covered in the last class till solar energy and the questions from the solar energy specific numerical questions that all we have covered and i have told you the main formula that you have to remember when you are solving questions from the solar energy is that efficiency is equals to power divided by area divided by input multiplied by 100% or the current i multiplied by voltage v divided by area divided by input multiplied by 100% here power is equals to i multiplied by v which is current multiplied by volt and based on this particular formula you have been provided few questions in the numerical section of this unit and according to that question either you have to find out the efficiency of the cell maybe efficiency will be provided to you and they will ask you about the power or maybe area or maybe input so input would be always your insulation provided or incident light provided in the question power would be directly provided in the terms of watt or maybe that can be provided in the terms of current and voltage and area if efficiency is asked area will be also provided if efficiency is given then area they will ask you everything you have to put always in the si unit so area would be always in the meter square unit as well so that's all you have to remember and you have to solve the numerical questions based on this a very important formula in this particular chapter i will tell you again every consecutive years at least you will get a question from this particular formula from the solar energy sub unit depends so Here we have completed that, and now we have to start the solar pond. So this is the solar pond that you can see in your screen. I will suggest you to see the video of solar pond working on Gujarat right now, and they use the water of that particular solar pond for electricity generation as well as for the hot water supply, because there is a dairy near to that particular solar pond. and i can remember that they use that water they say that they use that water for the cleaning of the dairy equipment so they need hot water for that that hot water they directly take from that particular solar pond which is present near to that dairy so that is the first solar pond in the world also uh, you have to remember so solar pond is very important in the perspective of the perspective of the indian examination now what they do in the solar pond so here you can see the structure of the pond that you can see here in this particular diagram and here it is clear that the solar pond is made up of the multiple layers that we have also seen in the case of the stratification of lakes so same concept would be uh, true for this particular solar pond so here you can see in the solar pond there is a lining so the water cannot go downside in the soil surface so that lining is important here then we have the different salt gradient layers so either you can create the salt gradient layer or you can create the thermal gradient layer or the temperature gradient layer in both the cases there would be difference in the density of water and due to that there would be formation of the multiple layers so here you can see the surface zone surface zone is made up of the fresh water and here also no mixing takes place in this particular lake why because of the gradient present here the first gradient is the salt gradient because the salty water would be denser in nature and that will go downside in the lake and this fresh water is also hot so this fresh water is because it is hot so also it is not mixing with the lower layer so surface zone is having high temperature and relatively fresh water as compared to the lower level then we have the second insulation zone when you come to the insulation zone the temperature will little bit go down as well as the salt gradient will also increase here so there would be again a density layer formation and then you go to the very down layer that is known as the storage zone or which is saturated salt water so this is based on the salt gradient that you can see and here cool water is coming and the hot water is going out because of the creation of this particular layer you can see and there is also stratification based on the temperature so here you can see this is the cool water this is relatively uh relatively cool water you can say as compared to the upper layer this is the hot water this will create hot water and the lower convective zone will have the very cold water because in the surface it is receiving the energy this hot this uh, hot water is continuously moving in the circular motion to the lower zone so here 
the hot water will go to the down and the upper layer there would be always present of the cool water and similarly this structure will go on and we use that hot water and the lower convective zone to create the density layer here as well as to create hot water from the solar pond so this solar pond is called as the salt gradient pond or it is called as the non convective solar pond because the layer which is you can see here that is non convective zone the upper is the convective zone there would be motion here convective motion here you can see the water is going up and down up and down in the circular motion similarly we have the lower convective zone the middle zone is only here lower the non convective zone you can say what question they can ask you about the solar pond generally they can ask you about few theoretical question for example what would be the depth of the solar pond depth of the solar pond would be 1.5 to 2 meter that is the depth generally we use to create solar pond now what would be the salt concentration or what is the salt concentration generally used in the solar pond so the salt concentration is different in different layers but this can range from 5% to 20% so this salt gradient is important and this depth is important india is the first country as i have told you established the solar pond under the national solar pond program at bhuj gujarat and the youtube video of this particular solar pond is also available so i will suggest you to see that video once that video is very helpful it will give you the practical knowledge about the solar pond this is the theoretical section or the theoretical knowledge of the solar pond how it works and why we create the different convective zones so if you understood the topic of uh, the stratification lake stratification so similar concept used here different layers are created the upper layer is going to be heated up that is going to the um uh, whatever purpose they are doing maybe cleaning of the equipments maybe creating of the energy whatever they are doing and then again the cold water will be go to the pond again for the solar heating so that is the main concept of the solar pond so i hope this is clear to you and let's move ahead and see what is next present thing in the solar pond okay next thing that we have to discuss is the solar cell or photovoltaic cell now uh, one thing you have to also remember in the case of solar pond that is you can calculate the efficiency of the solar pond with the same formula here in the area the area of the solar plate instead of use that what you can use you can use the area of the solar pond and it will act as a photovoltaic cell or it will act as a solar cell so the formula formula is not going to change here the same formula you have to use here as well so this is about the solar pond the next important thing that we have to discuss in the solar energy that is the solar cell or photovoltaic cell that is very common in use nowadays even for the household uses for the street light purpose maybe for the industrial process also industrial um industrial making of the energy you can say or the creation of the energy is also takes place through the solar cells a very large area is covered with the solar panels only and that will create the electricity so electricity generation also takes place so the concept of solar cell or photovoltaic cell is important for us if you look at the photovoltaic cell or solar cell so this is made up of the generally two or more layers of the different semiconductors with one layer containing the positive charge and other layer containing the negative charge so what do you have to do you have to complete the circuit you have to uh, just uh, join these positive layer and negative layer with the help of wire once you created that particular system and if you started somehow the movement of the electrons from this negative layer to the positive layer the movement movement of the holes from the positive layer to negative layer that's all you can create the electricity so the same concept is used here the photovoltaic cell or the solar cell will made up of the two layers so one is having the positive side another one is having the negative side now if you look at the sunlight i have already told you that in the planck's law or in the concept of planck's that sunlight consists of small packets of energy and these packets are termed as photons so these photons strikes the cell surface where it is either reflected may be transmitted or may be absorbed the main thing that is required for our purpose that is the absorption of the solar energy so the electrons can heated up or electrons can energized and they start flowing from the negative side to the positive side or sorry positive side to the negative side positive side will give the electron and the negative side will take that electron and the circuit will completes 
then here the reflected amount of solar energy and transmitted amount of solar energy is have no use so both are you can say useless for us the energy main is used for the energy efficacy of that particular electron is the absorbed solar energy when the photons are absorbed by the negative layer of the photovoltaic cell the energy of the photon gets transferred to an electron in an atom of the cell so this is the main thing the negative layer is in the front of sunlight you can see here the sunlight is coming here this is the front contact this is the back contact and this is made up of the semiconductor material two different layers and this is the auto reflective coating anti reflective coating which is reducing the reflectance and the transmittance of energy and it will increase the absorbance of energy so whenever there would be sunlight come here this sunlight would be absorbed by this particular side with the increase in energy the electron escapes the outer cell of the atom the freed electron naturally migrates to the positive layer we have created the circuit here so this electron will move through that wire it will create the uh, electricity here and this electron will come back to the positive layer here again the freed electron naturally migrates to the positive layer containing a potential difference between the positive and the negative layer when the two layer are connected to an external circuit the electron flows through the circuit creating a current this is the main concept of the photovoltaic cell or solar cell that you have to remember so this photovoltaic cell or the solar cell can only work whenever there would be flow of energy from the sunlight as soon as the sunlight will go away or there would be no sunlight available then the energy flow will completely stops so that's why in the photovoltaic cell or solar cell nowadays the battery is also attached so from that battery you can get the electricity during the day time the battery will be charged with the help of solar cell this is all concept of solar cell photovoltaic cell so i hope this is clear to you